Welcome to today's broadcast. I'm reading from John chapter 4 and verse number 24. God is a spirit and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. That's it, my dear. Um, we've been talking about what it means to worship God, worship him because of his wonders, because he's the only God, because he's the holy God, and because he's the uh, immortal God, and because he's a powerful God, because of the salvation we enjoy. But here today, the scripture is saying uh, it must be a spiritual thing. Many people are worried instead of worship. Simply because they are seeing life from the point of view of their circumstances and situation. You won't be able to be a true worshiper if you look around you to worship God. You know, there are some songs we sing in church that tells you that uh, people don't understand what is worship. Uh, you know, you say, when I look at my left, I look at my right. There are some times you will look all that and won't see anything. So, a true worshiper doesn't worship based on what why we're looking at are the things which are seen, but I think which are not seen. That's talking about the spirit because the things that are seen are temporal, the things that are not seen eternal, you know, they are spiritual worship. So, this scripture says God is a spirit. How God operates from the point of view of spirit. If you're going to prosper, it's not going to begin with your job, it's going to be a spiritual thing. Begin. So, a worshiper is the one who worship God from the spirit. So his worshiper must worship him in the spirit. So in the spirit that you believe that tomorrow is better. In the spirit that you trust that God is going to bring that baby. In the spirit that you know that that relationship will come. You see it in the spirit and in truth. The truth talks about the word of God. So you're worshiping God from the point of view of what his word has said. You can't worship God based on the promises of men. Otherwise men will fail. The Bible said the whole earth and heaven will go and fulfill but not an ailed or dark of his word will go without fulfillment. So a true worshiper is a man whose focus is about the spirit. He says, what did I speak to you? Their spirit and their life. So you are worshiping God based on his word. His word already said you will not die young. His word already said that you are the children that the Lord has given to you. You are for signs and wonders. His word has said that it will take away sicknesses from the means of you. So when you are in a storm, you take your eyes off what you can see into the realm of the spirit and the word and begin to worship God from the point of view of what your, the spirit sees through the word of God and his word. Scripturality is supernaturality. So everything the word of God has said is your point of view of worship. To be a true worshiper is to worship God from the point of view of his word. It's like saying, I know God cannot lie. It's like I say, I know that my God has said it and it will bring it to fulfillment. So it is in the spirit that you worship. A true worshiper worship in the spirit, in the spirit of your tomorrow being a great day, in the spirit of knowing that your children cannot fail, and then because the word of God already agree with what the spirit of God is saying, you're worshiping God expressly. And that's why worship is the best expression that you have faith in the word of God, that God can never lie. And that's why Abraham, at Andre, he has not seen the baby. In fact, he didn't consider the deadness of the Sarah's womb or the, his own body that is now old. Rather, he considered what the word of God has said and he gave glory to God. If you can give him glory, that shame will disappear forever in your life. But it has to be in the spirit and in the truth. True worshiper worship in the spirit and in the truth. I'd like you to write that under the video. i like to believe that you'll be enjoying our Thanksgiving weekend, but tomorrow is the great one. That's a Thanksgiving real. On Sunday, you don't want to be absent from Thanksgiving. I'd like to invite you if you're in Portugal, our church is there. If you're in Worry, our church is there. If you live in Udu, our church is there. And if you're in Abuja, our church is there. I'm going to be in four places at the same time. God bless you. Have a wonderful time.